Um, we're just going to get started. Uh, so my name is Maria Flores, and I'm a graduate student um, in the chemistry and biochemistry department, and I'll be one of your moderators today. Uh, so we have uh, two moderators. Rafael. Hi, I am Rafael DeMarco. I am a postdoc in Leanne Jones's lab, and I'll be the second moderator for today. Okay. Yeah, so welcome, everybody. Uh, this session is Clinical, Medical, and Dental, Session A. Uh, and our first speaker, his name is Brandon, and he is going to go ahead and get started now. So go ahead, Brandon. Hi, everybody. I think it keeps muting. Sorry about that. Okay. okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Brandon, and I'm a second year bio student. And my project is called Therapeutic Cardio Thread Production for Heart Therapy with a 3D printed assembler device. And this research project was conducted at Oxnard College. So first, I'm just going to go in and explain uh, what CardioThread is. And CardioThread is a model in which a doctor harvests a patient's own stem cells and differentiates them into cardiomyocytes or cardiac muscle cells. And these cells can be placed on surgical thread and sustain full growth and can support damaged heart tissue. And we extended this into using 3D models and computer-aided design technology to further control this growth, and I'll get into more detail about that um, later in the presentation. And so the reason for pursuing this new methodology at all is because of the urgency that concerns heart disease in the United States. So according to the, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, uh, cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of mortality worldwide, and over 6 million Americans over the age of 20 uh, had heart failure between 2013 and 2016, and over 216 or 219 billion dollars are spent on heart-related surgeries annually. So there seems to be some sort of incentive for uh, pursuing new heart-related therapy. So here we can see the cells that we cultivated in our first step in conducting cardio thread. Uh, for this experiment, we used murine or mouse stem cells and we treated these cells with alpha-MEM media treated with 1% dimethyl sulfoxide, and we coated the uh, plain gut, uh, cat, the plain cat gut suture, which is the surgical thread, with gelatin, fibrinogen, and thrombin, and these are all reagents that we found would be able to sustain the necessary growth of cells. And that's what you'll see on the right. You'll see some demonstrated cell density there. And we suspended these sutures using one of our first cells that we created, and after incubation for 14 days at 37.5 degrees Celsius, these cells also exhibited contractile behavior that's similar to uh, heart beating. And this gave us inspiration to move on to what we named the D model, which allowed for more suspension of sutures, and so we saw more growth and contractile behavior on those sutures. And so these two models, confirming the ability for our sutures to sustain linear growth of these cardiomyocytes, and we had a lot more control and agency over how we went about growing the cells, and so we had a proxy for incorporating these models into our next uh, step in creating the cardio thread. So this is our um, cardio thread surgical kit, and because sterility and safety are two of the cornerstones of um, safe medical care. Um, we wanted to find a way to construct a cardio thread in the most expeditious and, and clean manner as possible. And so you'll see here we have all of these components that um, contribute to creating a sustainable cardio thread, and I'll go into each of these in detail. 
So here we have the Weaver, and uh, oh, I just wanted to mention that these are all made out of 3D printed material. And so first we have the Weaver, and the Weaver allows allows us to coat the sutures in transcription factors, and it promotes cell differentiation and is a good starting point for the rest of the experiment. And so that's especially helpful for this model here, the assembler, which is essentially a working assembly line, and it allows for a continuous production of cardio thread. And so the way that it works is the cardio thread is moved through this apparatus here and is coded in each of these four reagents that are listed here in the order of gel, cells, fibrinogen, and then thrombin from right to left. And so by the end, you have an evenly coated, clean, sterile cardio thread that can be used. And uh, in order to keep that stable and keep that in place, we have what's called the spool. And that's what we're going to use to uh, just essentially keep the cardio thread in place and secure it for use with the assembler. And last but not least, Oh, sorry. So last but not least, we also wanted to apply um, pacemaker technology, which is what we included here at the bottom. And what we found was we were able to sustain growth and contractile behavior, but the contractile behavior only occurred in localized areas of the cardio thread. And our objective is to create a uniform beating cardio thread so that the entire thread exhibited that same contractile behavior and would function in as similar a fashion to heart tissue as possible. So that's where the pacemaker comes in in terms of introducing an electrical circuit to the cardio thread and allowing uniform beating of the cardiomyocytes because we do have contractile behavior. We just want to make it more abundant. And so... That is um, all of the components that contribute to this entire surgical kit, and that's one of the biggest objectives that we have in the future. Um, hopefully, after all these steps, we have an efficient and effective method of producing and continually reproducing cardio thread, and that's one of the biggest future directions we're following, like I said, and ultimately, we can refine this methodology both to make it teachable in a uh, classroom laboratory setting for college students and also to reproduce this in animals and uh, explore possible clinical applications for heart disease patients. And that's what we've um, been working on for the most part. And so that is about it with the presentation. And these are just all of the resources that contributed to uh, this project, my, my team and the um, the other resources here that I listed, and um, including our uh, our publications of inspiration, so to speak, um, and yeah, that's my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. That was a very nice presentation, Brendan. Uh, does anyone have any questions for Brandon at the moment? There are a lot of people that really like your presentation, but I guess you were very clear. No one has questions for you at the moment. Okay, great. So if we don't have... Oh, oh. there is one question from yeah. Dr. Johnson. She is asking, where is the technology in terms of moving to clinic? Right. So in terms of clinical applications, that's, um, that's a future direction that's probably um, going to be pursued after we standardize the methodology. So that's something that we haven't quite gotten to yet. But after we standardize the technology in terms of um, enabling mass production of the cardio thread and um, making it 
uh, making the process of producing the cardio thread more accessible in terms of the 3D printing, um, then we can probably be something that moves to um, clinical applications in that, in that area of 3D printing. So, hope that answered your question. Yeah, thank you. All right, great. Thank you so much, Brandon. So if there's no further questions, we can move on to speaker two.